just as we gather. Let's, and as we, as we bring that, this welcome to ourselves and to one another in our wholeness, that wholeness includes our, our sense of being being the, the sons and daughters, the offspring of Mother Earth. We are earthlings, we are earth creatures, and, um, and our ancestors, uh, so the ancestors of this land in this place, uh, here in Montreal, Chicago, Montreal, Yankahaga people, uh, wherever you are, uh, and other peoples, other peoples who have stewarded this land um, for thousands of years, who bow uh, in respect and, and gratitude for the, the modeling of uh, interrelationship with all beings that is present in the spirituality and culture and way of life of these peoples. Um, it's something that all of humanity needs to really bring into our awareness, expand our awareness to, to incorporate for, uh, for the benefit of all, for our own uh, survival and the benefit of all. So as we begin, uh, as we begin, I'm going to share the screen. Uh, and we can chant, mm -hmm. uh, we can chant the refuges and precepts. So uh, we begin with honoring the Buddha, honoring awakening. Can we bring awakening to a place in our lives which is central, which is our true north, our, our orientation, our, our core orientation toward awakening, toward liberation, toward compassion for all beings. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato. Sama Sambuddhasa. Dang Saranam Gachami. Namang Saranam Gachami. Sangam Saranam Gachami. Jutiyampi Buddham Saranam. Gachami Jutiyampi Damang Saranam Gachami Jutiyampi Sangam Saranam Gachami Patiyampi Budang Saranam Gachami Tatiyampi Damang Saranam Gachami Tatiyampi Sangam Saranam Gachami Just 
taking the five precepts. Uh, these are the foundations of virtue, of non-harming, of supporting life. Uh, that is, the, is really the foundation of our practice. If we are intentionally causing harm, whether it's through uh, taking life or stealing or lying or using our sexuality in a way which is harmful to ourselves or others or, or getting caught up in addictive behavior which causes heedlessness. It's, it's very hard to develop the mind. It's very hard to develop a collected mind, a tranquil, peaceful mind, and, and an aware, attentive, steady mind. So these, these form the foundations for our, our practice to awaken for ourselves and for others. Anati pata vera manisikam adam samadhyami. Adina dana vera manisikam adam samadhyami. Kame su michanchara vera manisikam adam samadhyami. Sawada wera mani sika adam samadhyami. Sura maraya maja pamadatana wera mani sika adam samadhyami. Idam isilam saga pala yananyasa pachayo hotu. Sadhu, 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 Anandami. I mentioned um, in the beginning of September when when I began uh, the when I began teaching the in person sessions again um, that that my intention is to just uh, slowly go through the Satipatthana Sutta, the Four Foundations of Mindfulness uh, Discourse. Um, exploring it, you know, there's just so much there. So, so uh, and I'm, I'm uh, making use of this wonderful book um, it's, uh, by Bhikkhu Analyo. It's called Satipatthana Meditation, A Practice Guide. And um, uh, and one of the things that Bhikkhu and Aliyu does in this uh, in this text is he's um, kind of re uh, connecting, uh, un uncovering, going back to. He's a he's a wonderful scholar as well as a as a deep uh, yogi, you know, like he has uh, a very deep practice, and um, and so he is uh, going back and re-exploring the the early Buddhist texts because, as insight meditation or vipassana meditation has been taught um, in the Western traditions, you know, like, like insight meditation society, Spirit Rock, and other 
um, organizations which have kind of westernized. Uh, it's, it's, it's been um, very much in the Theravada commentarial position, comment, commentarial um, tradition. Uh, so, so he's going back and saying, well, you know, that, you know, those came um, like after the time of the Buddha, 500, 1000 years after the time of the Buddha. And, um, and so what look going back and looking at the texts and, and kind of verifying what the early Buddhist texts said. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting exploration, which I find um, really speaks to me because I find some of the, some of the ways he talks about the intention of the discourses, uh, I find very relatable to my experience. Um, one of the things that he talks about is um, that, um, uh, that mindfulness is a quality of mind it's a, it's a, uh, it's one, it's a, it's a factor of mind that co-arises with other factors. So, so, uh, so what, as we cultivate it, you know, we, we're also cultivating other factors of mind. Um, sometimes, sometimes mindfulness has been taught in a way which seems to separate it from the tranquility practice of, of uh, samadhi. You know, as if you practice, and this is kind of the way I learned it, and I taught it in, uh, you know, for years in this manner, uh, that that you kind of cultivate samadhi first by bringing the attention back to the breath, and and uh, you know, and and like letting go of the busy mind and coming back to the breath and stabilizing tension in the breath. Um, and, and, and what an Analio is pointing out is that the texts really don't teach it like that, as if it's a progression, that, that, that they're really intertwined, that as we cultivate uh, the, the tranquil mind, the tranquility of mind, steadiness of mind, we're also cultivating sati, uh, mindfulness, and as we cultivate sati, we're also cultivating um, the, the the samadhi, the the the, the, um, the the tranquility, and so um, and 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 that's it, that's very much my experience. That as I, you know, as I bring my attention back to the body, back to the breathing, that I'm also uh, it's. It doesn't have to be a very narrow uh, kind of excluding way of focusing the attention on a particular place that I feel the breath in the body. You know, like it can be that 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 way of practicing um, meditation in which you you feel like you have to just really keep a very narrow focus. And if the mind, and if the mind wanders, uh, you have to bring your attention back to a particular place, like in the nostrils, or in, in the chest, where you feel the breath, it can lead to a kind of, um, like a very excluding way of, experiencing your practice that that which can actually lead to spiritual bypassing uh, which is a way of like pushing away um, patterns habits um, you know emotional states that actually we need to understand and integrate um and learn how to be with and and we need to also see into the nature of these emotional patterns we need to see in their nature what what we're seeing into when we see into the nature is that we're seeing that they arise 
and they manifest and they pass away. And so in that way, we are gaining insight and understanding and wisdom and a capacity to be with everything that arises internally and externally in our lives. So there is this quality of, of um, clearly knowing that is um, one of the uh, one of the words, the, the the mental qualities, mental factors that co-arises in our mindfulness practice. And the word in Pali is sampajana, um, sampajana. And, and it's clearly knowing. So mindfulness, sati, is a quality of awareness that clearly knows what is arising, what is happening. Um, first of all, you know, and the first focus of practice is the body. So we know when we're sitting, we know when we're standing, we know what sensations are arising in the body. And another quality that co-arises in practice of mindfulness is equanimity, that we are, we are aware without getting caught up in preference. So as I am, as I am feeling the body internally, like aware of the body, internally and externally. Uh, I may be aware of soreness, you know, in some, in my, some of my joints and, and <clears throat> I might be aware of certain sounds or certain, you know, temperatures in the room. And I, I, and I can be aware of it. And maybe I know that they're somewhat unpleasant or pleasant, but I don't get caught up into you know, grasping that I, that it, you know, I, I need it to change from how it is to something else. Um, so that, that kind of getting attached to our preferences is a quality of mind that we become aware of in our mindfulness practice. And we, uh, so we become, we, we gain insight into how that, that, uh, that mental state of grasping and, and being attached to our preferences um, leads us to suffering. So it's, you know, we recognize that that is the direction of dukkha, of, of uh, unsatisfactoriness, of, of like we can't control the sensations in the body. We can control the sensations uh, that we experience in the environment around us. And so, so uh, by adopting that state of mind of wanting to control, needing to control our experience, we, uh, we get caught in dukkha. And so, so the, the insight is into that uh, dynamic of how dukkha arises. So, um, so clearly knowing when there is grasping, clearly knowing when there is aversion, clearly knowing when there is, uh, you know, a mind that is balanced, that is not leaning, you know, that is not for or against any particular um, experience, but is, is simply with experience as it arises. So, um, so as we begin our practice, I'd like to invite you to, to cultivate that quality of mind of um, stabilizing the tension in the breath, in the body. Uh, and I will offer a bit of guidance. And, and, um, and as we notice that the mind is getting uh, pulled away from attention, from presence, 
awareness in the in the body and the breath. We can use the breath as an anchor to come back to, and also to to just ask ourselves to you know what is present in the body was was there some mental drama going on some some getting caught up in past or into projection in the future how is that being known in the body um, and um, and and then you know in that in that quality of openness and and uh, investigation, coming back to a, uh, this quality of clearly knowing, uh, understanding, being aware of what is unfolding as it is unfolding. So, um, so we'll have a, a chance to perhaps explore that together uh, a little bit after the sitting. We'll have a a bit of time for um, some discussion. So let's let's uh, take our posture for meditation, feeling the body balanced and upright, or lying down uh, with the spine aligned, or standing. However, your body is positioned, with the eyes closed or slightly open, hands resting in a way that's comfortable, not putting strain on the shoulders. Bringing an intention, however you would frame that, express that. To practice for your liberation your own welfare and the welfare of others. And perhaps as we begin the practice Reminding yourself to be kind, opening to kindness toward yourself, compassion, acceptance toward this conditioned being, this mind which is conditioned by the world, by our upbringing, by our experiences. Experiences which have perhaps enlarged our understanding, experiences which have wounded us, all of these condition the way we perceive and respond. And the process of becoming aware is liberating us to clearly see and understand how these conditioning factors limit us.
bringing attention, collecting attention in the breath, perhaps beginning wherever you experience it easily. And if the breath is not a, uh, an accessible entry point for you, just feeling the touch sensation of the body on the earth. Or sound, the dynamic experience of sound rising and falling. widening the, the base, the foundation of sati to uh, include the whole body. It might be, um, you might do this by being aware of different parts of the body times, perhaps um, eventually stabilizing in just this embodied sense of presence in the body. Supportive, you might focus attention at times on the touch sensation, or the inner sensations of tingling, rise and fall of the breath in different places in the body. And then widening out to the sense of the whole body.
you find that as you bring attention to the whole body, that there is a particular place in the body where there's contraction, tension, tightness. You might just rest your attention there gently, bringing an awareness, gentle awareness to that place. Softly resting with it. Perhaps even allowing the awareness to sink in to that place of tightness, as if the mind is saturating that contraction. And you might also, as you Practice, notice that the mind is being pulled to a particular story, a particular set of conditions, events in your life that you feel very caught by. And you might notice as, as you can just bring mindfulness to that, noticing it in the moment as it's arising or as it's playing out. Bring an awareness to the body and notice if the body is tightening up in some way, in some particular way. Again, bringing this awareness to the body manifestation of the mental pattern. And as you do this investigation, this mindful investigation of the mind, as we do this practice of understanding the mind, liberating the mind, we can there's, there can be an insight that arises into the nature of what drives those thought pattern, patterns, what drives those patterns of contraction in the body. And this understanding is not necessarily, it's not through analysis, but it's just through a insight that just arises as we step back momentarily, give space to this pattern that's manifesting through the body and mind. And instead of being at the effect of it, become aware of it. So in that moment, insight can arise into the nature 
of the drivenness in the body and mind.
as we come to the end of our formal practice. I invite you to touch into that, those qualities of peace, equanimity, balance, compassion, letting go. that have arisen in your practice today. And the beauty, the blessing of those experiences can be acknowledged, affirmed in one's being. And, and we can also bring the intention to share these blessings with the life around us, with those who are suffering, suffering the impacts of storm, impacts of wildfires, impacts of sickness, the impacts of oppression, the impacts of internalized judgment of being not good enough. So many different ways that suffering arises in the world. Sharing the blessings of our practice with all of those who suffer and, and also the joy of our practice with all of those who are thriving. May the blessings, the virtues of our practice and our lives serve and support the happiness, well being, and liberation of all beings. So, um, so we're at this point in in the uh, in the session, what we've been doing uh, is kind of giving a pause to for those who are online. Uh, if you wish to, uh, if you can't continue on um, with discussion Q and A, uh, you can. You could take this time to sign out um, and uh, and say goodbye, and uh, and and we'll we'll be uh, continuing on with uh, just exploring together the, the teachings and the practice, what what's come up in your practice, what's you know what's resonated for you in the teachings um, that have been shared. Uh, how do you experience? And apply the teachings um, in your in your practice. So, so that that's a very rich exploration, and um, and so uh, I think that um, uh, as we begin next week going forward, um, I'm I'm going to just uh, you know if anybody of course if anybody online has to leave. Um, that you can just leave, but I think I'm just going to seamlessly go into the next part, and I'm going to consider that the session is is 90 minutes, uh, and uh, and so, um, but of course, please do take your leave if you need to. Uh,
but uh, yeah. So um, yeah. So uh, and and let's take a, a just a moment uh, for those at home and here, if you want to release your posture for a minute and and just um, change posture, uh, please feel welcome to do that. Diane. 